So, why do you think people don't want to interview you? Um, well, because most people who are doing typology interviews want to position themselves as the expert, and I will run afoul of that, probably. Do you claim to be an expert? I claim to be the world's foremost expert. Usually experts, don't you have to, pub have you published anything on type? I mean, you mean like in some sort of science journal or something? <laughs> well, I would never be, no nothing in type would be accepted in a science journal. I don't know, just would you write a book? Would you write a book on type? I mean, I've written shit tons of documents about it, uh, but there tend to be one-offs. Uh, I I would like to write a book. I've, I've started a book on type that I've, it's called, uh, Frames, functions, and fields, or something like that. But anyway, uh, it's a good title. Okay. I got through the first chunk of frames, and then I turned my attention to something else. I haven't returned to it. I, I do plan to finish that at some point, because type links very very strongly into how people relate to framings. So more abstract types tend to prioritize framing's higher in their overall meowing of things and people who are less uh, abstract or like the mm -hmm. more like sensory tend to prioritize the experiential aspects of things and have trouble with their relationships with maps in that direction instead you know wow do you ever um, I guess if you've ever done the, the studies, and I'm sure you might have some guess on this, when you do your typing police, do you what per, what percent of the time do you think you get it right? I mean, I don't think I ever get it right because I'm making claims that aren't justified, regardless, right? In other words, I can't actually type somebody without typing them. Type police is me saying you're you definitely don't present as this type sufficient for me to have probable cause to put you in jail but I'm the type police not the type judiciary that's a fine distinction okay now when okay. I when I actually type people and do a full session and ask them a bunch of questions that are both self-reporting questions their value correlates their additionally strong skills linkages to those functions where we have those strong skills linkages which are SI and ENTI and I do the full assessment then, even then, after the full assessment, sometimes I have to tell people I have a qualified typing for you, like I did yesterday. I'm pretty sure that lady was an ENTJ, but okay. I couldn't completely eliminate ENFJ. Uh, she's one of the two. She's SI polar. But, okay. and, and I'm pretty sure she's ENTJ. But she was, she was working hard to self-report irresponsibly. Right. <laughs> Um, but then, and her sister who also typed in the session she was definitely INTJ and I, I it took me a little while to get there with her not quite as long as it did for me to get there with you but right. but uh, once it came clear it became clear and I was able to tell her it's 100% you're an INTJ whereas her sister I couldn't tell her but see that that's what it means to be responsible in your assessments of people is to say Right. The reason why I can tell you 100% is because these things here eliminate these other possibilities and lock it down. You know what? I actually I couldn't quite get this for a while. I don't know why you do this, and it's it's funny because it's so random. Is your some your community polls that you do? Hmm. Ra random questions. Hey, How do you come up with those? <laughs> I don't know. It's just whatever funny thing I think at the moment. Like <laughs> makes no sense. Like, uh, the last poll I put up asked, which song-based um, admonishment is best? And it was, uh, don't go chasing waterfalls, don't stop believing, don't bring me down, don't you forget about me, or, I forget, I forget the other one. What, what's winning? I didn't, I didn't see that one. I believe, uh... Don't stop believing in funny. What is there any relevance to you? Be like, oh, that's so interesting. Is there more content that come from that, or it's just like throwing it out there and see what comes back, and then nothing? I just was saying, what 
What's a funny poll question for which one of the answers could be don't go chasing waterfalls? Because I was thinking that at the moment. Like, don't go chasing waterfalls is such a funny lyric because, of course, waterfalls are not running away from you. The waterfall part stays exactly in one place. Mm. The water in the waterfall that leaves the waterfall is no longer part of the waterfall, so it's impossible to chase it. So I thought, that's, that's weird about Doko chasing waterfalls. That would be a funny answer to a poll question. And then I actually, because I couldn't think, the only other lyrics I could think of or a song that started with don't were too obscure. Right. So I googled lyrics for don't. And then don't it, fear the reaper. There it and is. And then I, yeah, don't fear the reaper was the last one. You're right. And then I looked at the suggested search results, like the auto. Like, are you trying to ask me this? And I picked four other ones from there. <laughs> oh, okay. And I don't normally do that. Normally, I make up all the, all of the answers. But uh, in that particular instance, I just couldn't think of famous enough songs that started with don't. Do you do you constantly think about? T.I. related phrases that we say in English that make no sense, but we just say them all the time. I mean, yeah, but I'm more likely to to notice things like when CJ was streaming the other day, he used the word penultimate to mean like like extra ultimate or something. <laughs> when, okay. it, when it actually means second to last in a series. <laughs> and, oh. And so... I, but the way he used it, it wasn't exactly clear to me if he was using it wrong or if he really meant the thing that he was saying was super great was the second to last in a series of great things. So I had okay. to ask him to clarify. And then he said, oh, you, no, you can use it like I use it. I'm like, no, you can't use it like that. I've never heard anybody use the word penultimate to mean, like, extra ultimate. It, I didn't. I thought it, to me, it sounds like, like uber ultimate. Uh uh-uh. uh, it's second to last. It's the one right before the last one. So if you were to go to Jack in the Box and order a penultimate cheeseburger, then you'd have to wait until Jack in the Box knew that the last cheeseburger they were gonna sell today was coming up next. Then they'd squeeze in yours before that. Oh okay. Then you'd get the penultimate cheeseburger of the day. That would be a good like experiment for you to do on a live. <laughs> Try to get a penultimate cheeseburger. <laughs> Just like come back at uh come back in like eight hours. <laughs> that is a good idea. <laughs> All right, let's. I think that would be. I would. I would tune in. I would throw some money in the super chat or whatever if you have that. Well, I'd have to Just go to various paper. Jack in the Boxes and explain to their manager, I'm on a mission here to order and successfully attain a penultimate cheeseburger. So I need to have a non 24 hours Jack in the Box, and I yeah. need a very board manager <laughs> this is this is the kind of experiment that we need to, to do in the type community shake things up that's what I say um, like the TI question sort of like we say things like um, have a good one when people are leaving like, have a good two why not three mm. um, those are the, that's the, the dumb TI brain for me it's like oh have a good one is that stupid? Is that even is that even a legitimate question? <laughs> well, I mean, in that case, it seems pretty clear that the it's it's a contraction of of how or it's a the one refers to day, right? Right. But um, the thing that is kind of equivalent to that, uh, oh, I lost my I lost it. I had it in my head for a second and it's gone. Anyway, I can't I can't think of what example I was trying to think of, but um. That that one wouldn't bother me because it's so it's so casual engagement. But what I'll notice is when somebody says something that in a way that impacts what they mean. If it doesn't impact what they mean, like if you use bad grammar, but you're clear on what you mean, then I might notice the grammar, but it won't really bug me because sometimes I I often choose to say things in what I consider wrong ways because I think it's yeah. funny, you know? Right. So I don't think there's inherently anything bad about using incorrect grammar, but if you're saying words that appear to be expressing meanings other than the meanings I think you're trying to express, 
then it makes me go, okay, are you using this word wrong? Or are you using the wrong word? Or is that what you really mean? Or do you know what this word means? <laughs> like, right. And, I don't think it means what you think it means. And a lot of times in life, I will get burned by affording some other party a benefit of the doubt that they don't deserve. Like, go to the doctor and assume that I can let the doctor control the frame of reference here and run this operation. When in reality, the doctor needs me to seize the frame because they're just going through their normal motions and they're not getting that the specifics of this circumstance are that certain certain things were determined logically as necessarily so or not prior to our arrival here. So you don't need to test for them. And doctors don't like that because it's not an empirical reason. It's a, uh, mm. it's a process of elimination kind of, kind of approach towards medicine, which is totally foreign to medicine. Okay. You, as a content creator, what kind of content do you consume? Are you do you read a lot? Do you watch a lot of random shows? Like, how do you get ideas? Like, what is the, all the inputs that you consume? Um, I watch uh, on YouTube. I generally watch things like closed circuit TV paranormal things, <laughs> like, Good. like or right. or OMG! Can you believe they avoided that getting crushed by that thing by a split second? Oh, yeah. Like those kind of things. Um, and sometimes I'll encounter some bit of YouTube content that I get into for a little while. Like, I got into Mr. Ballin for a while, Mr. B. Allen and his storytelling. He's a good okay. storyteller. He tells, like, campfire stories. And for the first chunk of his content was, was really entertaining because it was more like paranormal-style campfire stories. Then he ran out of, of actual paranormal-style campfire stories. He's, he's not making them up. He's telling actual stories that happened, right? Right. That he got from, like, news sources and stuff. And so then it turned, the channel became increasingly about grisly murders, and I lost interest in it. I'm not interested in seeing things that are depressing. I'm interested in spooky stories about it. <laughs> spooky campfire stories, not not depressing real-life murder stories. Right. I definitely get into that. I like the real-life murder stuff. I don't know if that's a type thing, but... It, it somewhat is. FI Polar, we like to pretend that we're moving through a world in which nobody ever really gets hurt. Dang. Okay. And when we are forced to realize that people sometimes do, and that, that suffering occurs, it uh, it can leave a big mark on on the psyche for a stretch of time. I I diligently avoid fi fi difficult things. Like if I if I accidentally am watching something that and I don't know it's coming, and there's like this domestic violence scene or something. I will wake up for the next three mornings angry at this man who's not a real person and what he did to this woman who's not a real person and this show is not a real representation of her real life. So that's FI Polar. Like Wow. What is I asked another ENTP this question, what does what does S E look like to you? I'm very curious because I know a lot of ENTPs, but I I want you to like how does it articulate it to me? Well, the most important thing to note about SE and NHP is that it's their least conscious function. And by conscious, I mean they're not able to recall instances of using that attentional manner very easily. And this happened strikingly yesterday in a typing session. I was oh. typing this woman, and in my head I was going along. She's, I think, pretty sure she's ENTJ, pretty sure she's ENTJ. And then all of a sudden, I was talking about how she was ENFJ. And I said, okay, when did I shift gears? What did she say that made me shift gears to ENFJ? In my head, and both out loud and in my head. I cannot remember for fucking life. I mean, what did she say that made me shift gears? What it turned out, it, it finally hit me eventually. Oh, it wasn't something she said. It was me observing her smiling and nodding and effing physicalities. And the reason I couldn't remember it is because as an any dom, I always ask the question this way. What was it that that person said that made me meow? Yeah. It's never supposed to be actual physical data that informs oh. me. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. 
So like in your so in our typing session, the one that that I you know booked with you, you said that one of the reasons is your own blind spot prevented you from seeing it in somebody else. Yeah. So I do have a I I to try to identify fi. I try to eliminate ti or eliminate fe because I don't really have I don't see it. Other people will say. And I know that other people must see it more clearly than I do because I have heard people say plenty of times to me in sessions where I'm struggling to identify somebody's type. This person is so obviously FI, Eric. How could you miss that? <laughs> so it, you know, and uh, it's like Boba Fett this morning when I was talking about. Um, do, he want he suggested I re-record this song, and I said, "Yeah, I probably would do a better job of it now." And he said, "Yeah, you got to use your TI." I'm like, no, both. Uh, that's TE. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. That's definitely TE. Knowing how to produce music, like how to record this way instead of that way in the order of operations and realizing that you've got to attend to this first and then that or else it's going to... Uh, all that stuff is TE shit. Yeah. So... It if, definitely is. Okay. If you, but if it's your polar, like Boba Fett, he's an INFJ, you might hear that shit described and say, oh, TI. <laughs> You know, it's definitely not. Okay. So I have the same thing with FI. I see. So, like, EE, I, I just, um, I'm asking you because I, I have these internal conversations myself, and I'm like, I wonder what someone else would think about that. Why does, like, TE and SE look exactly the same, but they, they're, like, why does that energy or action-oriented nature look the same, and how can you distinguish it? Like, is it affect affectual? I know you use that term a lot. Like, oh, your affect doesn't seem... A certain way is it easy to see te versus like estj versus estp yeah that, Can you that's see the easy to, differently well it's easy to distinguish because se doms are you know follow through comes from strong si and strong se the si has kept track of what you're planning to do and the se follows through on it however ESTPs have strong SE and strong SI, ignoring fifth slot. But um, because they're SE DOMs, SE expresses really as opportunism, pulling the trigger on things. Mm -hmm. Now, to pull the trigger on anything requires some amount of follow through. So if I want to smoke a cigarette, I gotta take this sip of tea. Get out a cigarette, pull yeah. it out of the box, and light it. Now, that's very little follow through. It's easy for even me to do. Right. But so that doesn't make you an SE DOM. Right. It doesn't make me an SE DOM. And it means that I have less than, I mean, I have more than, like, profoundly retarded levels of, of SI. <laughs> I can't remember from this moment to this moment <laughs> that I'm going to smoke a cigarette, right? So, um, the thing is, with an SI DOM, I mean, an SI tool, tool user, like an ESTJ, the SI is the operational value, keeping track of all the things that you have planned for the day. Right. And the following through, it occurs because more easily with their six slot than another six slots, because SE and TE are both physical functions and are or cooperative like that. Hmm. It doesn't work that nearly as well for the ESTP in terms of both having uh, having follow through as well as instead of clear up for them like opportunism because um, the SI ignoring uh, is is not going to prioritize as a part of their action types, right? So it's like they're trying to yeah. use their knowledge function as an action function, basically, which <laughs> means that their experience of SI is to get their body to feel good. ESTPs? Yeah, ESTPs. E ESTPs. Whereas okay. ESTJs, their expression of SI is to render their plan, box, the boxes of their plan checked off. So it's like my dad is very difficult to for me to emotionally engage with, in part because if I go in and say, hey, this sporting event that we both like is coming on. Would you like to watch it together? He will always say, ah, I don't. I'm got, I'm 
planning to read this book, and then afterwards I'm going to sit on the front porch for a second, I, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that. In other words, he already has his whole evening planned out. Granted, <laughs> it's full of nothing but reading his book and sitting over there and maybe going outside for a second. But it's a plan. But it's a it plan. And my idea that maybe I maybe I can get some like sun points by trying to bond with him is not yeah. well received at all. It's, it's received as interfering with his plans. So how do you get as how do you get as one of those boxes in his plan? Oh well, you have to wait for him to initiate it. He would, so after I've I've surprised him much to his disdain with the suggestion okay. that it, we abruptly do something like hey I will watch this game right now he comes back the next day and says tomorrow evening let's barbecue a tri tip and then he'll go to the store and then so basically he seizes control over the whole thing he goes to the store and buys a tri tip for me to barbecue. <laughs> and tells me, like, okay, now and then he'll he'll afford me little teeny slivers of control areas. Like, now, do you want to eat at five thirty or six? Ooh, gosh, Dad, so many choices, <laughs> so many choices. <laughs> How about six? He's like, not five. Five thirty is actually quite better. When we had Thanksgiving, he was so maniacal about his expectations of the kitchen that when I set my coffee cup down in the area where the turkey was going to sit when I pulled it out of the oven in like an hour he's like, <laughs> ah, son that's where the turkey goes I I know, I just set my coffee cup down for a sec, dad because I'm watching this thing and I'm going to move, I'm still, I'm drinking it and I'm moving around and doing <laughs> stuff and the turkey can, the turkey's still got another hour I'm sure that coffee cup will be moved from that spot <laughs> before I pull the turkey out. Do you do you think that ESTJs can be entrepreneurs? Um, they're good investors. They're good yeah. financial planners. Yeah. Entrepreneurs That's not is the same. not the same thing. Uh, the, the thing is, for them, extroverted intuition is supposed to be the the pleasure the pleasure function. That's why it's always their idea that they want to do. And when you sit down at uh, dinner with them, in an ideal ESTJ world, everybody's rapidly listening to their long-winded stories about the Crimean War or something. <laughs> One of my favorite wars in Eastern Europe. Yep. Okay, I don't. I haven't known ESTJs to be talk like long-winded talkers, per se. You got to get a few drinks in them. Is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> By the time we're in the middle of dinner, like my dad has a, a strict rule, he never drinks before five or six p.m. I don't remember what time it is. One of those two. Yeah. Okay. It's a fair enough rule, but he adheres to it religiously. And then, once he does start drinking, then he kind of loosens up a little bit in the evening. Keep in mind that this guy's like eighty-three years old and great age. And he's my entire childhood. He was. Uh, very regular drinker, but I swear I never saw the man drunk. Like he, he'd come home from work, he'd down a whole glass of wine, and then he'd pour himself another glass of wine to sip, and then he'd right. probably have a third glass. Then he'd have a whiskey after dinner while sitting and reading his book, and this was like every day, right? But I swear I never saw the man drunk, and he never he. It was weird. It's like at my house, my parent when when it was like after dinner. My dad would be sitting in his chair reading his book about some history thing or philosophy sure. thing or whatever because he's interested in that kind of stuff. My mom would be reading her book, which is like some historical drama period book about about some Elizabethan woman struggling to be connected with her love or something. <laughs> and I'd be playing in my room by myself quietly because, you know, this was not a house where loud loudness was generally appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> what is your relationship, generally speaking, with INTJs? I uh, I generally get along with them well, or or I'm dealing with them as combative opponents. So some of the people who come in as combative opponents right off the bat into my streams or into comments and stuff, at least purport themselves to be INTJs, 
and are basically aggressively negating non-NI holistic interpretations as reductive. Now, I suspect those people probably aren't actually INTJs. Uh, okay. Because I think that INTJs, even though their TI is six slot and countervalued sort of, um, that because they're TE tool, they're, they place as a modality of doing things the T's above the F's. And ultimately that um, that unlike say ISTJ who's got SITE uh, NITE wants their holistic understanding of things to validate communicatively as well <laughs> they don't fall back onto well it all of knowledge is particularist anyway which is what ISTJs fall back onto okay how do you um I asked you this in a comment on my video um, when you're typing such with me and you didn't answer, but maybe you can answer it now. How do you test for NI? What is your NI question? You have a lot of questions that I can tell what you're asking, but what's your NI question? Well, one of the, the best NI questions is uh, make this sentence concise. Here's a long winded sentence. So if you okay. want to become a forest ranger and you enjoy working in trees and among bushes and forest land creatures and other wilderness spots that you might find in the forested areas around our communities, then you should join the Forest Service. But how is that not a TI question? Is it, it no, TI I'm question? asking you to get rid of all the redundancy and collapse it down to the main point. If you like working in these three places, apply. Okay, great. So if you ask a ESTJ, one of those long-winded questions, and you've got several redundancies that mean the same thing, but they're just expressed differently, they will include some attempt to make each of those redundancies a little more concise, and they end up with a sentence that's almost as long as the original one. Okay, see, but I, that's what I think PI does is con is make chop down things to like the ultimate. Mm -mm. TI treats as words as though they were variables. So in other words, TI is about the relationship between variables and grammar, which is expressed as statement connectives. In other words, A and B is only true if both A is true and B is true. And it doesn't matter okay. what statements you put in there because it's implicit to the meaning of the word and. <laughs> so those are the sort of matters that TI parses out. In other words, if you say, well, it's got to be a penguin. After all, it's black and white, and all penguins are black and white. Then I'll say, yeah, but not all black and white things are penguins. Um, now, so that quiz in the typing session is your TI when you're... Okay, that one was kind of hard. I missed one. Yeah, well, I mean, you test it as not one, not two, not seven. Though I get, I get three possible results from the TI tests. Seven one or two, or something else. Which was six. In your case, six. But, yeah, that's as, that's as good as I can do with the TI test. It, it's not... I, in other words, sixth slot doesn't necessarily perform better than fourth slot or third slot, and third slot doesn't necessarily perform better than fourth slot because the TI skills test is only testing the part of TI that is expressing as an, as, in linkage with an action function. So another part of TI is the implicit values of it, which are fairness and uh, dispassionate uh, deliberation, which right. somebody may uphold as an absolute value, but not utilize as part of their modality of acting. Like for INFJ, they absolutely have TI values. They use TI in the sense that they avoid saying things that contradict themselves, but ultimately, um, they're mostly manifesting it selfishly. In other words, they want to make sure they're treated fairly, and they're, they're, the scope of their analysis of fairness can be very, very uh, radial according to their okay. interests, right? So yeah. it's like, yeah. you're, you're being selfish because you're taking three pieces of pizza and I only get two. But they'll ignore the fact that, like, six hours before, you 
you gave them, you know, all the rest of the whippets or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Well, so one of your uh, this was like my favorite part. I don't know how, what your question was trying to get after, but it was like, what's another word for charisma? What is that test? Because I was like, that just sounds like an IQ test. That was an NE <laughs> test. Oh, okay. How many synonyms can you come up with something for, for something? I usually use the words mischievous and flirtatious because they're hard to come yeah. up with synonyms for them. And then that, that compels somebody to go to either choose to present things that aren't really synonyms or to say, I can't really come up with any. People who choose to present things who are, that aren't really synonyms but have related meanings are using extroverted intuition. If they additionally say, now this isn't really a synonym, but it's related in its meaning, it's what I'm coming up with right now, then there's a decent chance they're using extroverted intuition and introverted thinking, at least in answering that question. Right. How did you decide those would be the words you landed on? Uh, just long trial and error. You know, it's like, it's, there was some session in which I randomly said synonyms are mischievous and then I realized after doing that oh you know what that's a good word to use it's hard to come up with synonyms for mischievous you can come up with nouns like scamp or scoundrel or scallion yeah but for the adjectives a little harder and flirtatious also same thing uh, I realized at some point that it's a good one because the only adjective I could come up with that was a synonym for it at the time was coy uh, yeah I think I said seductive yeah seductive one and, and so so that's why I ended up settling on those ones, but I probably, prior to settling on those, I had tried a lot of different things. It's, it's like, the way I have now is, has naturally come into its shape by virtue of what what's effective and what's not. So... Sure. Wow. Yeah. How many typing sessions did you do a week? Seems like you're doing a lot. I mean, you probably do way more than you record. Well, yesterday I did three that I did that didn't. I recorded them, but I only shared privately because they didn't. Want, you know, people don't. Have, people. A lot of people have me share with them privately, so I just upload that to Google Drive and share with them. But and okay. all three of them yesterday I did. But I don't have that many a week because, um, well, until I'm broke, I usually don't really want to work that much sure. on those kind of things it's like I there's something I do want to work on probably um like right now uh I'm really into my my dolls channel but uh and so I'm, I'm really into making Mindy's Club shorts it's Mindy's Club with a K everybody um there you go uh and so th it's like that's that's so much fun and then the other thing is, I don't, I don't, I like typing sessions fine. I don't like interfacing with people before typing sessions. Okay, my instructions are very clear. <laughs> you pay about me. I email you what day and time you want. You tell me a day and time, and then I say cool, and I put it on the calendar, and then we're done until we meet. But a lot of times, people want to play. Well, what day and time works for you? No, the instructions are positioned the way they are for a reason. <laughs> it's very straightforward. Do you PayPal me? I get a PayPal notification in my email. I go, okay, let me email this guy. And yeah. I cut and paste my thing. What day and time do you want? And then you're supposed to reply to that with a day and a time. And you'd be surprised the amount of times that people do not reply with a day and a time, but something else. Either, oh, I'll decide later when. And I'm like, okay, now i got to keep track of this. Or... Uh, well, what day and time works for you? I as that's the point. I don't have. I don't operate like that. You tell me. <laughs> uh, probably is fine. I'm trying to think if I was straightforward with you. I, I feel like there was a couple emails that I I, I. I feel like I didn't answer your question directly. Maybe I sent you my own Calendly link or something. But do you start to be like, okay, well, this person obviously isn't X type. No, I just say, this is why I hate this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hate interfacing. I don't, I don't like TE and stuff, and I don't like FE, really. So it's like, if, if I go to log into a website, and it says enter my password, and I can't remember it, and it's not in my saved passwords, just forget about it. Yeah. The world is over. 
because there's no way in hell I'm ever getting into that website. It would take too much effort. <laughs> it's like, I don't even know what email address is associated with it, so just fuck it. Just, yeah, you're just like, not, not worth it, I'll just get a new bank. Yeah, it's too much TE. <laughs> and, and same with Effie, it's like, I don't want to go back and forth with Mia in an email exchange, exchanging pleasantries, and or like answering your questions ahead of time or something. You want it or not? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I mean. So, as a as a, in the third slot for you, it's selfish. It's selfish because you don't want to do it. But I that's I want your applause, but I don't want to go to your show. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. that's not fi though. That's not fi. Like, what's good for me and? Well, look, I I like good fe, but I'm able to attain it in one-on-one -on -one conversations, and if I'm on stage. It's any other setting than that that is not conducive to me being happy because chances are if there's a, a group of four people, I am going to obey the constraints of my FE and say a lot less than I want to and be continually mildly annoyed by the fact that I've got all these ideas that I want to build off of what somebody else said that I just have to keep my mouth shut because I don't want to talk too much, you know? So, mm. Whereas in a conversation like this, this is this is perfect because you're interviewing me. You ask a question, yeah. and then I just get to give answers. And look, I'm the center of attention, and now I'm I'm the expert, and I'm telling you the answers, and this everything's just as it should be. <laughs> so if I came to you with like, I'm gonna ask you these five questions, and you have two minutes each to answer, it's gonna be a ten minute interview. You'd be like. You'd say no. That's that won't work. No, I'd say I'll kill that because I'm a debate coach. <laughs> I'm I'm used to having to do time speeches. Oh, okay, so that confined being confined would be okay. But it's only because I'm a debate coach and I've been years demoing for students. Remember, in this last speech in public forum, you only have two minutes to crystallize, to address whatever your opponent said in summary in the first minute, and then crystallize the round of the second minute. Because if they have new ATATs in the summary, you got to answer those. But then you have to spend at least a full minute on crystallization, and this is how that two minute speech looks. Yeah. And then I'll sometimes, you know, when I was coaching actively, uh, sometimes I have to do it twice to get it, to get a good one. But um, the more you practice that kind of thing, the better you get at it. ENTPs are really, really well served to be in debate because it compels them to use NI. It has the same kind of mechanism as the shorts feed does. I'm, <laughs> yeah. Shorts makes me be in I with my ideas because I have 15 total seconds to get the, to get it out. I enjoyed before you started doing shorts. I really enjoyed your. You did a, sh a short like it was like a minute and 15, but it was talking about ni, and you were just like, ni is concision. And I was like, yes, that's the word I've been missing. So I think that's you know you do well there. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I agree that. Um, I've always benefited from constraining forms. So I like to write metered verse because it forces you to have a certain syllabication and accent pattern and rhyme being a certain way. And I need some kind of form to constrain what otherwise will go off the rails. Like I tried to script out some of those Mindy's Club episodes and you know, I'm, I was shocked to discover Four lines of dialogue will not fit. Okay. And, and it's like, th that's when you really learn, that's where I'm really learning editing videos. So, oh, yeah. like, do I want to put this last little thing or, ex or exclude it? Does this, does this chunk need to have a 0 0.8 second set, second gap between the end of this speaker and the beginning of that speaker or a 0.9 second gap those kind of questions are linked to NI because when you get everything exactly right it's perfect and it pops and it's a combination of teeny little details like that each of which seems insignificant and which an extrovert and intuitor by nature uh, acts as though are insignificant how interesting okay um, gosh I had a question damn it doing so well and did, I forgot. Did you want some of my ravioli? Is that what you were going to ask me? If you can have <laughs> a bite of it? Yes, you no. can. Here you go. 
I'm, mm. I'm Rachel, cheetah, Rachel sorry. cooked it for me, so it's filled with love. Oh, it's not a Chef Boy RD, just right out of the can. No, it is. But she, oh. she put it in the microwave, though. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's gourmet. And she pushed the numbers to make it go the right amount of time. Didn't even put it on the stove and let it go, like, like really simmer. We we don't have a stove out here. Okay. And while we're welcome to use the kitchen inside the house, <laughs> that's the official official statement on the matter. <laughs> if you actually go in the kitchen, you'll discover that you've got an ESTJ hovering over you, making sure you don't touch his stuff in the wrong way. There you go. Oh, okay. Um, let me ask you, like, what what's a what is a subject that people are not talking about that they really should be talking about? Well, in the world in general, it's clearly cognitive functions, and the reason that people should be talking about it is because it provides a foundational frame of reference that's correct and allows us to do all the various work that we do about people in non-assaultive ways. And the status quo... <laughs> And the status quo, we're assuming that there's a single mean or average for people. And that right. individuals deviate from that to varying degrees. If you deviate too far, there's something wrong with you. The problem is, if you average everybody together, then nobody's got TI polar, nobody's got SI polar, nobody's got any polar, nobody's got FB polar, and everybody's got some pathology. And, and the only people who don't test out as being fundamentally pathologically broken are like high achieving ENTJs who get high openness and high um, high uh, extroversion and high conscientiousness and you know it's like okay yeah but what do they have to sacrifice in order to get all of those supposed attributes they have to sacrifice any meaningful sense of their own personal experience being informative about their own life which is to me sounds insane you know okay what do you think that what function is the least valued in society? Well, I think it's it depends what you mean by valued in society. So it's like there's a kind of there's a kind of values that we project onto young people. We tell them these things are good. It's good to be smart. It's good to be creative. It's good to be um, hardworking. It's good to be nice. It's good to be whatever, right? And we tell them all these things are good and then we also the schools I mean basically right right the right. schools then prove themselves liars about some of them in other words they don't really that teacher may have wanted you to be creative but this teacher definitely doesn't that creature may have that teacher may have appreciated you being funny but this teacher thinks you are the devil <laughs> um, and before you know it none of the things that it says are, are values to affirm end up being consistently affirmed throughout this institution and ultimately then you come out of there with various wrong ideas about yourself and what's mm -hmm. wrong with you it's, it's kind of like without cognitive functions everybody emerges into adulthood having been spending their childhood learning what's wrong with them and then they spend their adulthood unlearning that that's what's wrong with them or they or they just continue devolving down this wrong path of of self-loathing and basically conflict with the self you know it's like mm -hmm. and, and that's what I think like you know people who who are attached to mistypings are engaged in it's, it's, it's fundamentally a conflict with themselves it's like it, you you are a person has a given attentional configuration and that attentional configuration can be established objectively in most cases now the reason we can do that is because some of our ways of paying attention express as predictably predictable strategies of engagement in with external or objective data. So in other words, if I put an apple on a table and tell everybody to throw 10 rocks at this apple and keep putting it back there and see how many hits they get, right? Then I've got some objective data. I've got this person got 0 for 10, this person got 10 for 10. And I could group them. Now, will that tell me about their cognitive functions? Actually, probably not very much. I don't think SE really links that strongly to physical capacity like that. Uh, it, it, if it would more link to use of uh, force, like 
I would expect an SE Dom to always apply the right amount of force when doing shit. And mm. it, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to have better, perfect aim or something. But the, yeah. but the thing is, there are other kinds of, of skills that do link more precisely to attention. So, uh, while it's not the case that an SE Dom is necessarily going to be able to hit the target every time, it is the case that an NE Dom is not going to feel any need to prepare for an interview at all or discern what kind of questions that are going to happen. Yeah. Any Dom is going to be like, okay, well, you're going to have some questions. My job is to stop talking occasionally to allow you to ask another question. That's smart. Do you, here's the question I was going to ask. Do you think, because I assume affect comes into play here, do you agree with any of the work that's being done with, like, voltology? Well, no, because... Even though there are physical correlates that seem to be fairly strong correlates, a physical observation never qualifies as a justification for reaching any conclusion. So, it, because what you look like and or your physical gestures and stuff, I could, I can, and I sometimes do point out when people are doing obviously epi things like this, like what I'm doing right now, you know, with, yeah, yeah. with, uh, or they're doing the listening form of that. Go on, please. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll notice that, but it's more of a communicative behavior in that instance than it is um, a, uh, a fucking, where am I going? Is it linked to a function? Like, you can't link right. an action to a function. Right, okay, right, that's right. So if, if you're talking about micro expressions or the fact that you've got beta quadra eyes or any of those other physicalities, the reason it doesn't work as a way to type people is because if you explain to me that I'm that type for those reasons, there's no way for me to independently verify it. Whereas if I tell you you're a meow type because you can't, you, you, you have no idea how to even begin to answer a question like, my mother's mother's husband's only son-in-law is who? And you are just completely blown away and baffled by it, which most people are, actually, because yeah. when you throw in the son-in-law, it, it's your father. Your mother's mother's husband is your grandfather. Your grandfather's only son-in-law must be his daughter's husband. So that's your dad. That, that was too much for me. But the thing right is, there. even simpler ones, like, like my mother's sister's child, if for TI polar people, it is an absolute battle to try to work through that, and it will always be. In other words, they will never successfully, no matter how much they try, <laughs> learn to answer those kinds of questions because they are intentionally configured to always approach deliberation through the other deliberation function, which is to link it to how precious it is to them or how important it is. So FI is basically an importance calculator and TI is a correctness calculator. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. That's fascinating. Okay. So TI, like, TI doesn't, it's, I love TI because I, I, I'm reading a book on etymology. And I feel like that's a book that TI users want to know. Like, what is, what is the, the, what are the words about? What is the root word? Is that a TI That's a very, longing? What you're doing is you're, uh, you're, you're having an illicit love affair between NI and TI there. It feels like it. Yeah, because you think that the, the, the origins, the root, the core kernel of the thing is informative. Whereas I do, I, yes. I don't generally think it's particularly informative. So what I will say is, well, look, this is how people use this word. They use it in ways sure. X, Y, and Z. To mean mia in, in context, mia mia and mia. Now, right. which one of those meanings do you mean, and is it in which kind of context? In other words, whatever the ancient Greeks meant when they said gymnasium, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right, right. Because you're the right. one talking, and I'm the one talking, and I need to figure out what you're doing with your words. That's a good point because I've always, I've tried to flip this on his head and go but someone says I'm going to the gym and I say oh you're going to the gymnasium and they're like well I'm not going to the gymnasium I'm going to a gym mm -hmm. and I'm like well what do you think gym is short for 
I bet they think and gymnasiums are just in schools. I bet. Exactly, but how is it different? It's not, but it's, <laughs> it's just the only time you hear it called a gymnasium is in a school, or or the so like, the auditorium. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, well, and you play, you know. So when people are like, oh, I'm gonna go to the restroom. I'm like, okay, we'll have a good rest. I'm like, a room that you rest in. Those are like the etymology. I don't know what what I'm doing when I'm thinking about that, but it's interesting to me. Well, what about lavatory? What's the What's the etymology of that? Is it from lavender? Is it from lavish? <laughs> you lavish there's, yourself in the lavatory? <laughs> there's got to be a Latin root somewhere in there that I'm not la, la, lavare or something. Who knows what it is, but that's a good... I'm going to look it up. I'm going to get back to you on that. Mm. But those are funny to me. And I'm like, I spend way too much time thinking about that sort of stuff. I like that stuff, too, because I'm an NI valuer as well. i got a fifth slot. It's an absolute value for the external world. I'm likely to listen to a podcast about etymology. Like, there's this podcast called The Word Nerds. Have you ever heard of it? No, but should I? I, I used to listen to it. It's, it's okay. exactly about that. They take a couple of words and they discuss the etymologies of them and show, like, how far how far astray it's gone from its original meaning. So. That feels like a very T.I. thing to do in arguments. Is like, well, you've been using this word wrong the whole time, so your argument's invalid now. Because I actually know what you're using, so like your sentence doesn't make any sense. That seems like a bad way to use it, though. Well, I mean, I try to use it like this. Okay, well, what do you mean? And can you provide me some definition of what you mean that I can use, too? <laughs> Okay, so this is why you had with a uh, or with a, a YouTuber this argument about semantics and what semantics means. Yeah. And like trying to define the terms before you can talk about what semantics means. Well, I mean, semantics is I say it's small, you say it's little. It's small, no, it's little. No, it's small, no, it's little. Oh, those are two words. We're both referring to the same thing. We both think it's small. We're just using different words. <laughs> when, when you say, like, you know, it's just a matter of semantics, we're referring to situations like that, okay? The thing is, what people who want to disavow the power of language to do anything do, is they say, everything's semantics. That if I'm parsing out logically what must necessarily not be the case, given that Mia is the case, and, for example, if I'm spending most of my hours of the day talking like this, and... I ended a live stream prior to talking with you, in which I had been talking for like several hours, okay? <laughs> so, the thing is, there are a finite number of hours in the day. If I genuinely spend most of my day, many days of the month, talking, then I don't have time to be spending most of the hours of my day, say, doing hygiene, personal care. That's sure. what that's what gets sacrificed to being in any dom, is attention to your physical body, you know, I shower when I, I bathe when I want to have sex. <laughs> there you and go. That's about it. <laughs> okay. Um, it, Valid. So. Daily. No, not I don't I don't <laughs> I'm not that I'm 50, so. Okay. Every other day is fine. <laughs> that's that's good enough. It's fine. Cool. Yeah. Is that a se thing? Yeah, I'm not. It, it, se people find sex important or more important than I do for sure, like. If you were, it's gotta be true. If you were yeah. to say, okay, Eric, you have to give up. Well, I mean, it, it, pretend I wasn't in a relationship, okay? Okay. And it wasn't somehow critical to maintain a relationship. And I was asked, okay, you have to give up one, Eric, sex or drugs? Say, see you later, sex. Yeah. Instantly. <laughs> it totally. wouldn't even I, be I, a I think I would say the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll drink. So how does it? One last question for you. Um, I think we should do more of these random uh, talks because it's kind of funny. But what do you think an SE looks like for an INTJ? I always have called it very in, like indulgent in the wrong things, getting obsessed with the wrong physical things. Well, it it looks like one of two expressions depending on whether you're going to it out of stress or out of good self care. So it's like everybody who's functioning optimally has remembered to invite their fourth slot function to the party often enough that they can yeah. continue to be who they are comfortably. Now, it makes the most intuitive and obvious sense when you're talking about SI as a fourth slot function, because then you're saying, um, 
If you don't eat and drink liquid, Eric, you won't have the energy to continue talking forever, right? But with INTJs, it's the, it's the opposite. If you're constantly knowing holistically the truth of things without gathering any more data to know yeah. about, then you, you end up knowing about nothing. Like, there's nothing to know about. It. And IDOM is expecting to receive a bunch of data. And as those data points land, they land in various spots. And when the NI has enough spots to complete the picture, then it collapses down into a known, whole known thing. And it's probably links to its utility in some way by default probably. because it's your tool function. But then ultimately, right. it also needs to link to what's important to you because that's your selfish third slot. So um, regardless, because you're receiving and collapsing, then that means that you have to have stuff to receive. The, the reality is INTJs like INFJs will tend to receive NE because it's your fifth slot function. And just like I like to receive NI, I like pop songs. I don't, I don't want your fucking prog rock, you know? Okay, uh, yeah, I can't, I don't like prog rock, yeah. I, I, I like aesthetic candy. I like cartoons and I like closed circuit videos of you know, ghosts and I like, you know? <laughs> And people getting kicked in the nuts and falling on Not getting that. Hurt. Not that. Okay. No, no, no. That's too physical. Oh, okay. I, the only kind of physical things I like to watch are near misses. The no, 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 yes videos. Like, where it's just like, a disaster is about to happen and then they, like, fly the yes, plane. Yes, that's fine. Okay. But I don't yeah. like to see people falling off of skateboards, crashing, anything like that. Where really, people get physically hurt, it uh, makes me go, Arr! So you don't like, yeah, you won't watch, like, car crash videos. Not unless they walk away from it. I see. Okay. Yeah. I think that might be a big, a thin line, but a, a big difference in our types. Yeah. I will watch boxing, though. And I like boxing better than MMA because MMA gets a little brutal sometimes. And then it makes me yeah. do that thing again. But boxing, I don't know. I, I don't know why I like it, even though it seems contradictory to what I'm saying about not liking seeing people get hurt. But I like boxing. Yeah. I'm obsessed with Mike Tyson videos. I've, I've yeah, watched every I've watched, fight yeah. from Mike. All his yeah, knockouts, love, yeah. So he's fucking... All his knockouts. I have his und, I have his uh, undisputed truth, 600 page autobiography. I've, I don't know why I like Mike Tyson, but there's something about boxing. Maybe it's just like masculine. Well, I mean, that does it's outside of type. Mike Tyson was such a phenomenon too. It's like yeah, those those early fights as he's building up his record and going through some scrubs early on and then getting increasingly tougher. And he just comes out of his corner like this and just walks right up to the, just like bulls into the guy and just bam! And he's fucking yeah. just down like instantly. 15 it's crazy. seconds. Yeah. yeah I got and he's like 17 there. at the time and he's just like a physical beast. Like, and so something about that is attractive. But like, I don't like, I've never watched MMA fight. I've never watched UFC. I'm like, what is the appeal? Like selling out for this crap? I don't know. Well, I, I guess the appeal is for MMA that um, it allows people to, with different kinds of fighting techniques, to fight against each other. But the problem with MMA is that it turns out the fighting on the ground isn't very entertaining. It's slow. And it's just like beating someone's head in with your elbow. The whole time. Or, or just trying to get position, right? Like yeah. Two people struggling to want to be on top is... Not very yeah. entertaining to watch. And like smearing each other's blood all over the place. Like it's just like I don't know what we're doing here. I don't know. It's, but yeah, we have to discover what this boxing thing is so interesting for both of us. Um, all right, I gotta go cook dinner. All right, you go cook dinner. So I'll publish this on my channel, and then I'll just say uh, next time we do this, Joe publish It'll it on his channel, and he just didn't expect this to actually turn into an interview. It was just supposed to be a pre-conversation. And I've said all that now, so now you know, viewers. Okay, Thanks, bye. Thanks.